Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I have the pleasure to talk to another woman, Women Tech Makers Ambassador, Nick Granger, who is in Australia, Melbourne, Australia, right now. We are going to be talking about one of our favorite technical SEO topics, which is internal uh, linking and also its relationship to uh, machine learning and uh, all that jazz. Thank you so much for being here. One welcome to the show, Nick. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Um, just as a little introduction to me and who I am and what I do. Yes, um, please I'm introduce yourself. Technical, <laughs> yeah, I'm the Senior Technical SEO at Dijar Marketing. Um, like you wonderfully introduced me, um, I am also a Google Woman Tech Maker Ambassador, um, which I take with great pride. I'm the chair of SEO Collective Australia, which is a um, which is a amazing community of SEOs for just shy of 3,000 members all across Australia. We are in three separate states here. Um, which there's only five, so there we go. <laughs> um, and um, very, very lovely. I'm uh, considered by Search Engine Journal ranked as the top 202 experts to follow, um, which is wonderful. And I'm also published in four separate books, um, which is uh, garnered number one uh, for the topic SEO on Amazon with Majestic um, by David Bain. So that's out at the moment. So if you want to be able to read anything, um, please go and find that on Amazon right now. It's for sale. Um, but I'm not here to talk about uh, the book or anything like that. I'm here with Montserrat. Thank you so much for having me on the channel. It is an absolute honor to be here and to be able to chat about internal links. So one of our favorite topics. So I had to have you on the show, definitely. So first of all, what is internal linking and why is it so important for us? I love starting there. Um, just to really, really get our bases all covered with the fundamentals. Internal links are incredibly important. They basically help you help users, um, your customers, and Google be able to navigate through your website to be able to find pages that you want to be able to have indexed. They're really, really great. Um, well, not just indexed, but you know, to be able to find them. Sorry, they are, they enhance your user experience and make them find um, easy to find and easy to access. Uh, they're also a really, really great way for us as SEOs to be able to distribute the page authority um, evenly throughout to make sure that the pages we want to be able to have indexed and ranked competitively are being able to be found. So think about all those orphan URLs, generally like pages with no links pointing to them. Um, we want to make sure that we're eliminating as li as much as those as possible, but also really wanting to like really showcase um, those really important pages and be able to like have like as many as many points as relevant and uh, uh, meaningful as possible to be able to evenly distribute that across the site. So that's why they're so important. Mm. And how do you decide which pages should be linked to? Oh my gosh. So this sort of opens up a little bit into the manual aspect that traditionally um, a lot of the time SEOs will, will find themselves in. Um, so I think, uh, you know, when we're, when we're talking about internal links, we're talking about menu links, we're talking about footer links, facet navigation, um, we're talking all, all, all aspects of like maybe structured links where you've got your breadcrumb schema and you've got your contextual links, which are your, um, your, your text links, image links, video links, and your audio links. So these are all the things that connect all your pages, all of your assets, and make sure that there are a good distribution between that. When deciding what is the most important um, place to be able to add to your internal link, a lot of this is quite intuitive. You know, you want to be able to have in your menu um, all of your main products or um, product categories, rather, or your main services be there. You want to find like your about us, your contact page. You know, those things make a lot of sense. But the thing that we find, um, particularly when we get to like 100 plus pages, is that scaling this and doing this efficiently is quite challenging. Um, yeah. And one of the things that I've always found, like particularly working on enterprise sites, at some point, it becomes a little bit of a cost versus benefit analysis. Um, the benefit is definitely there, but the cost and the time to implement that far outweighs 
the legitimacy of maybe adding this as like, you know, a crucial line item. So we might start to do other tracks of work like prioritization. We might just look at um, the way that tools external tools like Ahrefs and SEMrush and um, maybe even Rank Ranger will look at uh, the site structure. Um, also, mm -hmm. Screaming Frog is a really great way to do this. Might look at the site structure and be able to make some executive decisions where we might find a page, we will research as to you know what we're wanting to influence like with a query and maybe find on other pages you know, with that research of where these queries are, are mentioned. And then we might add an internal link back to that primary page if we can be able to do that. And as you can probably imagine, that stuff is very, very manual and finicky and is can be fraught with human error. Um, and like yeah. I said, you know, this is so impactful, but this is why a lot of the time internal linking remains one of the top factors that gets neglected or is kind of done um, a little bit like, yeah, we've done it, but we know that we haven't done a uh, a comprehensive job because of the complexity. So one of the things that um, I've wanted to do and I'm really excited to, to go into a little bit more is we wanted to create an internal link um, optimization framework that leverages machine learning. So this framework replicates and scales the way we could traditionally manually review that content, understand the context, research, and identify relevant link opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. Because when we think about it, what makes a good internal link, right? What makes a good internal link? Let's start from the basics again. The internal link must be meaningful. It must be relevant. It must have some good diversity of um, being able to find you. You will find like on a on a blog page, like oh, there's a great opportunity for an internal link there. Or you might yeah. even find from the product description, you might talk about. Um, related products or um, things of maybe different materials that it's available in. Maybe there's internal links opportunities in there. Um, but you want to make sure that that anchor text, you know, the actual text, to anchor text where um, you, you're linking from and to um, is also like meaningful and relevant. And of course, that natural placement. If, there, if there's like many, many mentions on a page, which is a more adequate place to place that um, that link pointing from that page to and from. So those are the kinds of things that we really, really wanted to solve. So yeah, no, definitely, it's, it has to be very, very useful um, uh, placing an internal link on a page and everything. But I have seen so many, and I'm sure you have seen so many pages where there were hundreds of links <laughs> to internal pages, external pages. So do you think there is a, um, a an actual number that we need to consider, a maximum number of links that we need to place on the page, on one single page? I love that you ask that question because we get this question all the time. You know, yeah. is there like a magic ratio? Is there a magic number? To <laughs> me, I think it's more... Um, more about what is good for the user. If every second word becomes an internal link, is that going to be relevant and meaningful? No. <laughs> so this is why it's sort of like, you know, it's more about like the way that we have um, we have studied, um, you know, we've scraped the top 10 blogs in the world with millions of pages written by genuine uh, you know, journalists. And we wanted to be able to extract that information to be able to to be able to understand, like, where are people naturally, when they're writing content, are placing mm -hmm. links? Because one of the things that I love about um, the concept and the application of natural language processing is that it is a wonderful uh, study and, ex and, ex and uh, a breakdown and extrapolation of good writing practices. So does yeah. if you are writing a fact or a statement, that demands a citation, right? And this is what we we train like our um, our machines to understand, to be able to find and to be able to like uh, get that. Plus, we will also feed it a ton of information, billions of endpoints of data with things like BERT large case model, um, so we can be able to have further inference points to be able to understand like, oh, you know, further from just like well, what we've understood from the top ten blogs in the world. Um, and the way that journalists might do them, like award-winning journalists, like incredible, um, you know, field reporters in a variety of different topics. We also want to train the model to understand, like, you know, these are 
these are the things, places, facts, and, and things like entities um, that we can be able to say, like, um, you know, have have some relevance and have some meaning, you know, from the word. It's not just like apple as a as a as a fruit. It could be apple as a product as well. So we're giving it that concept as well. Going back to the framework, um, what I think might be really uh, good to sort of like explain is that it kind of works like an algorithm, like a process okay. of steps um, to be able to to take your your site and be able to um, start to generate something interesting. So um, you use Screaming Frog, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? We all love Screaming Frog. Who doesn't? Frogs. I love who Screaming doesn't? Frogs. <laughs> I think it's a factor tool for everyone. <laughs> As it was well as one of the in first combination tools. with with that. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the first tools that I ever got that I I started to like really really love technical SEO. Um, yeah. But ha shout out and hats off to those to those um, you know people who who built that tool um, because we we built a crawler ourselves and my gosh uh, building a crawler is really tough. <laughs> It's it, really, it must really not tough. be an easy task, really, because you have to think about the technical no. side of building it up, but also the, the usefulness yeah. of how you actually uh, leverage that uh, for for the user, really. Um, yeah. But I I really like what I really like about LLMs and machine um, learning in general is is how people are leveraging it for something which is rather useful, rather just just like this one, for example, because you do have an internal. Mm -hmm. Um, an internal tool to 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 build um, to build uh, internal links. I think for different types yeah. of sites. Yeah, definitely for and the link love... BERT component, we we leverage an LLM. Um, but the actual internal link framework, we leverage hmm. uh, being able to build a neural network from your site. So okay. we're really just using the the actual client's data. As, as a way to be able to pull inf uh, inference information to be able to make those internal link recommendations in the first place. Uh -huh. So when, like, when I say we built a crawler, we have a what's called a YAML file. And the YAML file says like, okay, only pull out indexable URLs. Here, like, you know, here's our sitemap and here's the things that we're, we're, we've got here. Um, but I only want to see all u indexable URLs because we all know that sometimes Sitemaps can be a bit janky. Yep. <laughs> I don't trust Definitely. them. Um, and then we want to be able to have those parameters set in place of like, we just want to look at maybe like a subfolder of sections or we, we just want to look at something specific. We can set all these these uh, parameters ourselves. Then we want to set the crawl rate so we don't piss off the, the server. <laughs> we want to maybe even do like a randomization to mimic human behavior so we don't sort of get triggered by, um, you know, your CDN or something like that that's um, malicious. Um, and we're just going to save all that wonderful HTML. And for me, again, as a technical SEO, I love having cached HTML um, from different times that we've crawled and extracted all this information because then I can kind of go back and be like, well, that's what the HTML looked like. So just a little further aside from that. But then with that HTML, we do a further extraction with beautiful soup. Um, and all my Python people out there will immediately know exactly what that is. It's this hugely, um, you know, powerful um, way to be able to extract content and things like that. But that's how we extract um, the title, the description, the text by setting like the CSS selector of just where we're wanting to extract it from. Um, and then we, then from there, we want to filter the links by just the internal links, and then we can be able to save all that information um, and. From there, we can build essentially the link graph, the actual link graph of the site. And it doesn't stop there because, okay, we've got a nice little like link graph. I look like a nice little like, uh, you Which know, is also of having here. a link graph, also having something visual to actually see and uh, at, a, at a glance what exactly it is that um, is happening or can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Or should happen. <laughs> and um, a lot of people will remember, um, you know, way back in the day with original webmaster tools, aka Search Console, when we had page rank yeah. available. <laughs> we calculate the page rank. We calculate the page rank for all of these, all of these links um, in the way that they distribute the link equity, um, so we can be able to identify high value pages. 
Then we also use the Search Console API to be able to give like real information about clicks, impressions, click to rate, average position to be able to give that context because those two combines give us a really great way to be able to think about priority. So once we've all done that, that's just getting like, that's basically just our process of getting nice, beautiful, clean data to be able to do something with because the next part is where we really start to, to take that and be able to build upon that as a, as a nice little base level. This is like the building blocks to be able to build a lot of, of really cool things with. So like I said, um, we wanted to build internal links. For us to be able to do that, we use, um, we basically have to train the machine to mm -hmm. understand language now. So yeah. we use like a pre-trained language model, BERT, <laughs> bi-directional <laughs> encoder representations from transformers. And mm -hmm. that converts that text into dense numerical representations called vector embedding. And f by doing that, it tokenizes the word. So say, for example, we have a word like um, price loss, right? Mm -hmm. Price is one token, less is a second token. And bidirectional means that like reads a left to read to right, uh, reads it from left to right or right to left, or in whatever way or whatever way the the, the language dictates. Um, in some languages, it'll read it up and down. It doesn't matter. It's really just getting that from one word sequence to the next and, and backwards to be able to understand the contextual information from 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 that text. So the semantic meaning, and that's the, that's the that's the basis level of really what Bert does. Now that we have the semantic meaning behind the, the text, the extracted text from, say, like all of the blog that we've extracted from this and all of maybe the product description, all of the, the, um, the service page information, um, all of the about us things, all of the um, PDFs that are linked, whatever we can be able to meaningfully extract that we're wanting mm -hmm. to um, bring into the internal link graph, right? Um, humans make connections by recognizing similarity between textual content and understanding the meaning and the relationships between them, right? We yep. have to explain that to a machine now, hence machine learning. So to mimic that for a machine, uh, we leverage things like cosine similarity because these mathematical representations we've changed the text into now exist in multi-dimensional space like they are a vector vectors have like magnitude and direction and you know it, like now the word becomes a number <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in space and i know that might be a little bit technical for people but this is like a specific place in three dim in uh in multi-dimensional space that is specific to that word so there is no real way of ambiguity for that word so be able to um, be able to pick out like from one word to another word in this dimensional space, mm -hmm. we use things like cosine similarity. So that okay. can be able to take, um, take this vector and this vector and be able to find similarity between that um, from a nice little cosine similarity. <laughs> <laughs> and that gives us the statistical likelihood of the connection between that. So it's very, very different from just doing like, you know, a, you know, a one-to-one a -one matching. It's very different from doing fuzzy match if, you, if you're if you familiar with that. It's more like, it's more refined. It's more um, in its contextual space in relation to all the words um, within within that. So it's, it's, it's context aware. And that's really, really important because if we're building internal link recommendations, it still has to be aware of the, con of the, the page that it came from. Mm -hmm. If we're just doing like, you know, one-to-one -one matching, it could be yeah. like, oh, um, you know, uh, this, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, apple as, as in um, a piece of fruit. And then we're on this, in the same website, we're talking about Apple, the company, it will just do the one-to-one -one matching and it won't be, have any context of, oh, we're talking about yeah. in this context, it's a fruit and this context is the company. So that's mm -hmm. why cosine similarity is really, really different and really important for that distinction. So now that we've understood that, humans recognize related content by seeing the similarity in topics or concepts between different pieces of information. So like I just explained, right? But again, 
the machine has to learn this. <laughs> we we have to teach it, and this is iterative. So we use things like TDIDS, um, awesome. uh, term frequency inverse document frequency, and that's just a fancy way of saying what is we want to evaluate with a specific score um, the importance of a keyword within a page relative to the sum of the pages. So in turn creates our link recommendations. We finally got to the place where we were talking about actually creating these link document, uh, these link recommendations. But this is where we can be able to pull the, these things from the three-dimensional space and be like, based on the semantic understanding, this is talking about Apple as a company. This is talking about Apple as a company um, within its same context that we're that we're really wanting to draw this meaning from. Mm -hmm. Let's link them together, and so we can be able to have. Um, where like in a product description, they're talking about mattress toppers and we can find in the blog content, they're talking about uh -huh. mattress toppers and in the same kind of context and we can be able to link these two really, really nicely. Um, and that's really the whole idea. Um, we've also uh, in integrated Labsy, which is um, a wonderful, uh, uh, I think this is done by Google. Sorry, I need to double check this, but Labsy is um, a multilingual, uh, data. So basically, it's language agnostic. So w it basically doesn't have un any understanding of. It's not like being pre-trained for English. It's not being pre-trained for Italian or for German or for Slo uh or for Japanese or for mm -hmm. whatever. It is language agnostic. It really is just based on um the 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 um the structure and the process and the text of the of um just really working on that semantic meaning in in itself mm -hmm. and within its context. Um, so we've we've been able to do this with multiple different languages. Um, and we've wow, even that's awesome. tested this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we've tested this with 12 different languages with really encouraging results. Like we were working with this, uh, this model with German. And I'm not a German speaking person. Um, and we were getting uh, a German native speaker to be able to evaluate uh, our our results, and uh -huh. um, you know we iterated the model, we refined it, and uh, you know the, it's it's like as as close as we can get at the moment uh, to real human evaluation. Um, you know, with with some variance, of course, like there's there's always okay. variance, but um, you know, on a statistical level, we're very encouraged by these results. So this is exciting. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. It sounds amazing. But now, explain all this to the client. Because with link, um, internal linking, I've been getting two, two extremes, two very different ones. Mm. On the one hand, there have been an afterthought, particularly in a migration. Mm. Oh my uh, gosh. Or after a migration, <laughs> really. <laughs> And then Not on the other hand, there have been like something super, suddenly super important that we need mm. to do at all times. And we need to place a link here, there and everywhere. And so mm. we ended up with a page, a web page, which you couldn't read at all because there were so many links. You never knew what, where to turn your attention to. So how do you manage um, internal linking issues with clients? How do you explain the importance? So this, like our model doesn't necessarily like uh, find, it doesn't, it's a, it doesn't work with like existing problems. Like there are existing problems that's still on us to, to be able to identify and correct. No, I meant so when I, uh, when you, when you need to talk to a client um, yeah. about internal linking, uh, without taking into account all uh, machine learning, et cetera, et cetera. How, mm. do you, how do you explain to a client that internal linking done right is important? Because a lot of the times, like I said, sometimes, a lot of the times they just don't care or they care too much. <laughs> mm. I think a lot of the time they find that they have thousands of pages. Uh, they might have thousands of orphan pages um, when they look at um, the architecture and they look at the click depth um, and they'll have like maybe thousands that are four plus click depth. Um, we know statistically that anything really um, four or greater and really I, I think it's less than that. If, you, if someone's having to click more than three times, I would argue, 
they're going to start getting frustrated. And yeah. <laughs> what what we're what we're aiming to do is to create meaningful interactions when we win the attention on your page to be able to find more relevant pages that are either informationally or commercially important to you. Um, we've done this with you know several clients already, and the the main thing that we wanted to be able to say um, with this is we have uh, created like a better user experience. Um, uh -huh. And this has like a, a direct proportion to the amount of traffic that you're able to, to earn from this because there's less barriers to be able to find information. Um, there's, there's less um, work that needs to be done by the user or by a, a search engine bot to crawl through and to find pages. Um, this can be a very frustrating experience on both sides. What we're talking about really is better data accessibility. If if um, if users yeah. and if search engines are able to find your deeper pages with a lot more ease and find it from relevant sources, they're going to be able to have more of like a trust in using your your site that mm -hmm. you're there to really help them with their informational or their their commercial needs. And that's really the main the main thing. And when you have an enterprise level site with, or or just even like a site with like, um, you know, an X amount of number of pages where it's kind of really frustrating or difficult to do this manually and to do this well, um, you know, well, I've run it on small sites with, you know, around about like 800, 900 pages. And 800, 900 mm. pages still is quite a bit to go through. It's not impossible. Yeah. It's just... Is there other things that we would rather be doing with our time to, to be able to influence this? Maybe snippet optimization is more important. Maybe working on um, refining some of the content pieces so we can be able to um, you know, make better uh, snippet pieces for, for, for um, featured snippet opportunities. Maybe we could do uh, image optimization so we can be able to get into Google Discover. There are a variety of other things that I would, I would find like have a, more of an ROI them working mm -hmm. on um, manually placing these. So yeah. what we're really trying to do here is um, by by solving this kind of problem, but having it in the case of like, okay, um, from a content direction, we want to be able to add these things, uh, add these links in place. Um, mm -hmm. And here's a priority list. We're going to be chipping away at this, but always with the with the idea and the vision that it's going to create a a better user experience and a better a way for for search engines to be able to access your data, um, to be able to use that HTML for whatever placement that they deem fit. And that is going to really um, build upon uh, traffic and that is really going to build upon, um, you know, the longevity and, uh, you know, way of being able to, to access the site. So that's really the one of the big things that we wanted to solve. Um, and this is something that, because of the language agnostic um, aspect of it, because of the um, the the more of the mathematical approach to the way that we're scaling these internal links, we're finding that a lot of the time our clients will come to us, um, perspective or existing, and saying, "Look, we have run a fuzzy match." on our title tags and really can only do one to one if it's mentioned in the title tag or you know in something that is you know we can kind of append it to and uh -huh. it's just not good enough it's not um intuitive enough because the page the context is completely different than what we're wanting to to uh to internally link it to so uh -huh. um you know they might find like instead of mattress topper it will just append it to mattress but that's kind of missing the whole point right that's a yeah. you know a subcategory page that's completely missed because it hasn't the similarity uh sensitivity has been set too far too wide um and for a human evaluator to work with a team of, of people it's just mm -hmm. a little bit like like what we have available from an algorithmic sense like out of the box is just not good enough for us to be able to scale this so that's why we wanted to build something that was more robust, build something that was more intuitive, build something that was um, mathematical and statistical uh, so that we could be able to have better recommendations that, mm -hmm. that really bridge the gap and find these nuances um, a lot more intuitively than we could. So 
that that's that's why we're really really proud of this. Um, something I didn't mention though, that's just a process to find internal link recommendation. You know that gives you the source page and the target page, and we've also um, built so we've got like you know five keyword anchor text suggestions from all of these, but that doesn't talk anything about natural link placement. That doesn't talk about anything about the actual anchor text from that content um, to be able to place it. So um, as a as a next part, um, we built Linkbird, and uh, this is available. Uh, you know, I think we've uh, you know made this uh, free on Hugging Face, and we have it as linkbird.com that you can be able to trial out now. Um, or if that doesn't work because the server's kind of um, janked, uh, dijan.ai forward slash linkbird <laughs> is where we have a duplicate <laughs> okay. version of this as well. So use that at, at your will. But this is, you can be able to copy paste whatever text. Whatever text you want, place it in, in there, go analyze. And irrespective of internal link, external link, it will basically pull up link recommendations based on the content and again this is what i was saying you know earlier in the call where we were talking about we trained like you know some of the top 10 um, blogs in the world with millions of pages written by real um, award-winning journalists how they like naturally um you know add internal or external links um to be able to source or reference their articles um intuitively um and we've also trained it well um but larger case um, model so that we can be able to have quite literally like a billion plus inference points um, and that, that's something that is far larger than we can do on uh, you know our in in relation to that our very inexpensive GPUs <laughs> because we don't have the resources that Google has um, but we wanted to be able to build something that you know still had as much of that that uh, real reference point as possible so you can be able to check this out now as uh you know this is the final part to uh our um, internal link optimization the framework um uh -huh. but we wanted to be able to solve like you know where on the page does it naturally say i i i demand a link i demand based on the content here um i want to be able to find something more intuitive and more interesting about this particular statements or this particular way that it's been read like read more or um you know we like we found that uh um you know there is more um there is statistically more uh road accidents in uh in australia you know where is that where is that reference from you know it will detect this and it will basically highlight it and say um based on the on the on page content mm -hmm. there should be a link here to, to be able to support that so Go have fun. Go play with it. We, um, we've had this live for for a little while. Um, it's completely okay. free for you to use. Uh, technically, it does cost us money. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yeah, I, I will place some links uh, to the, the blog post and also in the um, in the video on YouTube as well, so that people can can actually find those links and play around and mm. maybe make suggestions and everything. Because at the end of the day, it's all about. Uh, making things easier right for for clients for our companies uh useful for our for our uh, audiences generally. so i Absolutely. would like to talk very briefly about uh women tech makers we call yeah. women tech makers what it means what does it mean to you <laughs> it's a great honor to be a part of a global uh global it's index of leaders and movers and shakers all around um congrats to you as well for being another ambassador um, thank you it is it is wonderful to be able to share and um you know do something for our community where we're not just you know sitting sitting back and uh you know working hard and um you know making differences but not really reaching out and and uh, showcasing what we can do i think representation is such an important thing for for people um, uh, fellow women to be able to see um, and female identifying people. I have found that in my own community um, as chair of SEO Collective there are so many more women that have come and said like I wanted to um, explore sharing my insights because I saw people like yourself and like Montserrat and by 
um, Aleda and Lily and Cindy and, um, you know, so many other amazing women um, in the SEO space wanting to share what, what they know and what they do and taking up space. And Google uh, Women Tech Makers Ambassadorship was a wonderful way of doing this by, you know, official recognition, but also as a way to be able to connect with a lot of other uh, like-minded individuals, um, you know, all around the world. So I think it's I think it's a, a really great program. There's a lot of, if you do want to sign up, please, by all means, like sign up. There needs to be more of us more people that are wanting to put their hand up and say like, hey, I'm in this space. I am very passionate. I want to see what I can do to be able to outreach to my community and make events, and make groups, and make um, make connections with people. Um, but also say like, you know, I know all this really cool stuff. I want to be able to share what I do and what I know um, and find more of a network of community of people out there. So I highly encourage you guys to go and, and find that. Just Google Women Tech Makers Ambassadorship. Um, every year there are applications that are open. Um, the uh, acceptance criteria really is that you are somewhat doing something or somewhat already um, wanting to to take the, uh, your passion and to make an initiative out of it. So really it is open to any and every woman in STEM in some particular way and I think it's a really really great way to connect because they offer a lot of um, mentorship there's also yep. a lot of uh, videos that they will release um, by amazing leaders in this in the space particularly on machine learning particularly in AI uh, on coding and they will find they will also promote events in your area if you're not already connected with people so it's a wonderful resource if you are inclined please go out and do it because representation absolutely matters and you have no idea the influence that you could possibly have on someone that you know sees someone in their own cities in their own countries step up and um you know take on that mantle Yes, this, uh, what happens with this group is that it's not just for um, ladies in STEM, um, it's also for uh, ladies working in all areas within technology, and that includes marketing True. as well. And uh, it is really <laughs> important because at least when I started, there weren't that many ladies or there, there weren't the many ladies who would be able to uh, put up their hands up. And, mm. and and say, well, I would like to share my experiences. I used to attend to some talks and most of the uh, presenters were males. I did learn from, but then <laughs> I am I am a woman and I wanted to, to have more women around me uh, to see whether other women were actually more advanced in their careers because that was the way, the path I was, I was, uh, I was walking towards. And, and I, I think... I think it's it's important. It's important to know that there are women uh, of every age. It's not just girls. It's not just young women. It's also uh, middle-aged women or women over fifty as well uh, who are mm. working in technology, with technology, and making a difference as well. So uh, I would say please check out their um, events as well. Their events they are not exclusive. Uh, so um so you can sign up whether you are a man <laughs> or, a, or a boy who wants to learn more about machine learning the applications of ai whether you want to learn more about the ceo whether you want to learn more about uh collaboration etc etc that's mm -hmm. something that i i would encourage you to do and there is a few within the seo community there's a few women um Arish, for example yeah. Can Conitano, who's also appeared on one of the videos of this series and a few others yes please, please check it out i think it is it's well worth it 100 percent. and if you don't mind me saying um on march the 19th here in melbourne we're having um our events for international women's day um, oh, it yes. is in uh, it's at Launchpad in Cremorne. Um We've already got a heap of signups. I think we're already at like fifty mm. or sixty signups so far. So please register. 
Um, we would love to see you. We've got um, myself and Paul Glynn who will be hosting. We've got Amanda King. We've got Sally Mills. And we've got Remy Ordet um, as a, our illustrious panel speakers talking about the future of search. So we are very excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> and the same happens here in Madrid as well. So please do sign up. There's there's plenty of events around the world. So please do check them out and sign up for them. Your input is always welcome. And yeah. lastly, <laughs> I would like to I would like to know what do you do when you're not thinking about LLMs and um um, internal linking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What do you do with your free time? Uh, do you like gardening, say? <laughs> Something oh, totally wish, different. <laughs> oh, I wish I was a better gardener. Um, I can only <laughs> <Me delete>. <laughs> keep uh, monsteras alive, and they are. Uh, I think their advertiser thrives with neglect. <laughs> but no, I'm a. Um, I'm actually an a electrical violinist. Uh, I've been playing oh. violin for. 27 no 28 years of my life oh my god that's a lot <laughs> um ah, and i am a uh i'm an artist illustrator painter i painted this behind me um and i really enjoy just kind of sitting there listening to some podcasts with some music and um just just drawing uh as a, as a as a way to sort of unwind um plus i love video games um, <laughs> I, I love cyberpunk. I love uh, Fallout. I love Skyrim. Um, like a lot of a lot of the amazing RPGs out there. So uh, I don't play online. So don't come and try and find me and uh, you know get get cranky over me online. I am I am so old school with this stuff, but it's a great way to unwind. But that's that's how I spend a lot of my free time. If I'm not hanging out with friends and doing all the wonderful usual things. Um, and you know, taking my dog for a walk. So, <laughs> yeah. Are there any exhibitions or um, any gigs, perhaps that we could actually uh, perhaps advertise? I could actually put them on the, uh, the video or on the uh, blog post, anywhere yeah. where people can find your um, your paintings or your gig. <laughs> I used to do that <laughs> before I went um, went really down the rabbit hole with uh, SEO. Um, I used to do joint exhibitions where I would have like a residency at um, at a bar for a month, um, playing music and doing exhibitions at the same time um, as a way to sort of you know be like downstairs we're playing, upstairs is all the art. And you can be able to see that. I used to do that all the time, um, but not not at the moment so <laughs> i don't really do art for for money i just do it for fun um mm -hmm. but it, it's been wonderful you know i used to do that and i i can say that i'm an artist because i've sold quite a lot of art in my time and um i've toured internationally with music so i'm i'm very very blessed to have had the, these experiences in life um but i really love seo i really love what i do and i work for, with a phenomenal team and a phenomenal um, people and I just love the idea that with um, SEO, we're not. It has such a human element to it. Yes, yeah, we are is. influencing websites, but really we are replicating all the hard work that people do in the real world and replicating uh -huh. it digitally. Um, I love the idea of that process, and I love the idea of looking at machines um, and teaching them things about language and about life. Um, it is a, it's almost like a philosophical adventure to understanding the world and language around us um, and mm -hmm. its meaning and, and the way that it has um, impact on, on, on people um, and the world. And I find, I find that there's such a wonderful uh, kid-like joy with that. So <laughs> I'm very happy with what I do now. <laughs> it shows. It definitely shows. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time, Nick. It's been really great uh, finding out more things about you and about what you do. And uh, I will be publishing the, uh, the links, uh, her LinkedIn, her website, and also the links that she mentioned during this uh, conversation so that everybody can go and play with them, uh, with those, those tools. And uh, thank you so much again and uh, have a good day. <laughs> 
if I can just add one more thing. Um, yes. Montserrat, thank you so much for having me on your amazing channel. If you haven't already, please like, please subscribe and hit the notification bell for all of Montserrat's upcoming videos. Um, she has a wonderful library of amazing experts that she's been interviewing um, over the over the time on her channel, and she takes a lot of time to be able to do that. And the, every single video is a little bit of gold. So please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for everything that she's coming out with next. Thank you, Nick. Much appreciated. Uh, it's been lovely having you on. <laughs> lovely to have you Hi. too. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>